Good morning. We finally got just a little bit of rain yesterday afternoon. Just a tiny little bit. I'm wondering where some of our cattle are at. <laughs> These were the only two I'm seeing out here. She's over there eating some hay. And this one is over here licking this mineral block. Cute keeps these out for them. Our veterinarian said that the mineral block is a little bit more important than just the salt. He's always kept salt block out for them. But we've started doing the mineral block. Hi, darling. Good morning. Good morning. It's a beauty. It's fairly quiet here today. Not a whole lot going on other than the porch. I didn't have a chance to do the porch earlier this week because as I told you the other day, Chelsea has been really sick, and so, um, of course, Huey helped me. He helped me with um, everything that he could help me with. He doesn't understand cutting and making the bouquets and all that sort of thing, and I didn't have the patience to teach him. <laughs> so I just did it myself, but that's okay. We got it done, and... Um, it's been, it's been a good week. A little bit tiring, but it's been a good week. Chelsea worked graveyards last night, so she was able to go back to work. This week will be actually a fairly quiet week because market is taking a break. This one is planned apparently each year. They take off <clears throat> the first um, Thursday in... Um, in September so we will not have market this week but I'm thinking that next weekend I may go ahead and have a flowers with friends here on the property see if I can advertise that a little bit but I have to get the porch done <laughs> so <laughs> that's my weekend goal that's what I'm planning this weekend um, I don't know about y'all, but I, I'm a bit of a procrastinator, especially when I'm tired and there's a lot of things going on. It's kind of, I can put that off. I can, I can do that next Tuesday or whatever, whatever. But um, it helps me to have a, a um, a time crunch. I can't think of the word I'm looking for. Um, but if I have, if I have a time crunch and there's a, an end date that has to be met, it helps me. It's my understanding that that's part of the ADHD problem is that, uh, people do better if they're actually under pressure. <laughs> I've always been like that. I'm going to take you up and down the, um, the rose, show you the flowers and what's happening with them. We are in September now and everything actually really needs a rest anyway. Uh, we've, we have so deeply and hard, picked, cut them really hard that they're just about done. Th these are just about done anyway. The queenies, they're almost finished. They have given us a beautiful long season of blooms. And they're finished. Those marigolds over there, that, that row is completely done. And uh, down here, we'll have some queenies yet. And this, we especially like to use those in the little jars because they're so pretty in the jars. 
So come Monday, we'll be cutting hard again. And this row of basil is almost finished, but man, it has been prolific. It has absolutely met every need that we had for it. Absolutely. And this little, little bitty short row of cinnamon basil, that's lemon up there. But the cinnamon basil has done really well as well. The cosmos, I don't know, you know, it's a beautiful flower, but I think it has just more issues than I want to deal with. So I'm hoping that we can just find a similar flower to replace it with next year. The yellow ones to me are a total waste. And you, you really, it's really hard to keep up with deadheading. <laughs> you can see that. I just finally gave up and said, forget it. I don't want to cut these things. But the azuratum are beautiful. And we cut those really hard, cleaned the beds out, and they're coming back. These marigolds and these marigolds up here apparently had some kind of a blight. We couldn't get ahead of it. Um, and they sort of turn, you, before they even open up, you can see, they start turning brown. So we just need to take these out and burn them. But uh, and here's our oldest bed of the Benary's Giants, or the Benary's Giants, whatever. And they have really, really produced. And you see this one right here? It actually, I'm holding my arm, okay, my arm is straight out. I'm five foot six. <laughs> and uh, this thing comes up to my chin. That's pretty impressive. So they are really, really tall. And they have been so beautiful. And the colors have been so beautiful. Look at that color. So pretty. And this one over here. And these beautiful, beautiful yellows. And the oranges. They're a little damp this morning from uh, from the dew. These beautiful pink purples. But anyway, all of these beds up here are right now finished. So I'll take you down and show you the fresh beds that will hopefully get us through into October quite a ways into October, just depends on when, um, and then of course there's the Gumfrina, and on out that direction are the Celosia. But uh, here's the little bed of uh, sunflowers that I planted earlier in the week. And this little section down here are the sunflowers that I just scattered. They were mixed in with some peat moss that never, they never germinated earlier in the year. And I finally just decided to mix them up and just scatter them here and rake them in, <clears throat> put a little soil over top or a little compost over top, and we'll just see what they do. If they don't come up, that'd be all right. At least, uh, you know, there's just been some amendments now added to this dirt. But this would, if they come up, this will be our last succession of sunflowers for the year. If they don't come up, those down there will be our last succession of sunflowers for the year. And then here are some sunflowers that are hmm, not quite knee height, but they're getting there. Yeah, I guess they are about knee height. And then this little <laughs> freestanding bed, you can see there's nothing down there. And there's nothing up there. Just this tiny little bed of celosia. And they're almost all used up.
basil. Let me show you something. I thought this was interesting. This basil down here at this end is really, really healthy looking. And they're down here, if you remember, they're down here where they get shaded in the evening from about four o'clock on. And I set part of the basil, the, the same uh, grouping, I set part of them out down at this other end. And I'll, let me show you, now remember that. And let me show you the other down here in the full sun. So here we have Celosia coming on, already blooming. And some more Celosia, and I love these, these little purple flowers. There's, I've got a patch that's further along than this down here, I'll show you. And then uh, just a few marigold. I don't know if they'll end up with the same issue that the other end has. And then this is the final, final, final row of, um, of zinnia. And they didn't do really, really well. You can see there's a lot of empty spaces. But uh, they'll, they'll get us through. They'll get us through. Now, look at these. These are the little basil that are in the full sun. And now, the basil at that end down there is probably twice the size of the basil here. So we learned something. We found out that basil actually does well if it gets a little bit of shade in the afternoon. <laughs> oh, gracious. As you can see, I didn't cut suns yesterday, so that's on the agenda this morning. Those have to be cut usually every day. Sometimes we miss a day. Yesterday we had a lot of running in the afternoon, and it got hot so fast, so early, that we just uh, scooted out of the field as soon as we could and said, okay, we'll pick it up tomorrow. Here, these celosia are the purple feathers the darker purple feathers and I think they are incredibly beautiful and over there is the the light purple or pink whatever you want to call them and so these should be coming on all the way through until the middle of October and then these gumprina are my favorite these beautiful beautiful purple ones and so I'm glad we have a whole little field of them or a whole little row rather our corn down here is tasseling and it's getting really, really tall. I haven't even looked to see if we have any stalks on them or any corn on them yet. I'm assuming there is. Yeah, we've got some little corns coming on. So yay, really tall. Probably about seven feet. And then here's another little row of marigolds that's getting ready to start blooming. I think these are the cocoa gold, so they'll be the the darker, the darker color. And this little row of uh, sunflowers are they're finished. But you can see some of them we left because they were deformed. Some of them I left because there was a bee just having such a good time on them that I couldn't stand to cut it out from under them. So, and then here's the other row of, of lemon basil. And it's right now, I mean, it's doing really well. It had gotten blown down before Chelsea and I got the, um, the string up to hold it. So it's kind of, kind of warped when we use it. But it's tall enough now that we can cut the bent end off, so that's good. And then here we have a little short row of the benneries. And they're very pretty. And then our peppers. We have lots of beautiful bells coming on here. Yeah. And they're full. Still flowering heavily. And these guys will produce for a long time. 
probably until first frost. Peppers are pretty hardy. And Chelsea and I had found out when we, we went and talked to our um, agent at the extension agency, um, we went and talked to them about to find out if there's any kind of grants that we might be eligible for, especially concerning uh, like a high tunnel because we do want to grow um, the ranunculus and some tulips and um, lisianthus and things that actually do a little better in tunnels. I don't know what that is I'm hearing but uh, anyway we were told that there's not a whole lot apparently there's not a whole lot of grants out there for people that are just flower farmers but if we also grow food and this is I don't remember I don't remember what all of these are down here but some of them did really well. Some of them are kind of sparse. Um, but if we would grow food, that that would um, put us higher in the, the whatever, the decision making for actually getting a grant. Now this right here, these are the Celosia and these are the purple ones also. And it's odd that those shorter ones up there are blooming. These guys are not really blooming yet that I can tell. But they will be the purple, the dark purple blooms as well. And they are so, so beautiful. But whatever these are, they're doing okay. They just need to get a little taller and start blooming. <laughs> Come on guys, hop to it. Mush, mush. But anyway... And then down here, we have some kind of, we have three little uh, peppers that Chelsea and her friend Aurora wanted. They're called a scotch bonnet. And apparently they're a really hot pepper. And you can see they are producing down in there. Some little teeny tiny scotch bonnets. But they're going to be really hot. And these guys over here are the Natapenos. And there's lots of them. Lots and lots and lots and lots. You can see just tons and tons of these guys everywhere. And still lots of uh, flowers coming on. We will probably be selling the bulk of these at our two locations where we sell the flowers. But because we don't have need for this many in our freezer. We will put some in the freezer because I love the taste of jalapenos. I don't like the heat. But uh, we like to make stuffed peppers. And look at them. Look at them. There's just tons. But I won't put up so many that we just end up letting them waste. Because peppers to me, frozen peppers, seem to freeze or burn really easy. Even, in, and we use the little, uh, the little suction air packs um, where you suck the air out of the machine, or out of the baggies. And here are what are these yellow guys called? Y'all know. I can't think of it off, right off hand. These guys are doing really well. I told y'all earlier in the week that I would bring you down here to show you the pumpkins. Now our pumpkin vines are beginning to die. I'm not sure if that's because of it's just that time or I think part of it is because of just the really dry weather we've had. But you can see these little white ones. Oh, here I have one that's, look at them, they're still coming on big time. I have one. Wondering if it's loose. There's tons of them. Nope, it's still connected. There's tons of them. 
They're so sweet. I love these little white ones. And over here are little black ones. And the black ones are gorgeous. They're, they have, their stem is even just really brilliantly black. You see them? There's lots and lots of them. Still coming on. And over there you can see we have some orange ones. And the little teeny tiny orange ones. Next year, Chess and I have been researching this because these guys, it's just impossible to take care of them when they're on the ground and the weeds are growing up through them and all that sort of thing. So we found a design for, um, made out of wood. I have a few cantaloupe in here uh, mixed in amongst the watermelons. But you can see these guys are cantaloupe, little veiny guys. But um, we saw some trellises made out of just wood that's built in like an A-frame shape. And of course, you know, secure together. They're, they're secured together so that they're sturdy. And there's some more cantaloupe down in there. And amongst the watermelon. <laughs> and you can see the little, water, or the little pumpkins just interspersed everywhere. But uh, we did find out how to know if they're done or not. Okay. You see this guy? Right here. Where he connects to where the stem is and where the vine is. When this guy is totally dried up, this guy, where it connects. When he's totally dried up, the fruit is done. I saw that a couple of days ago. On YouTube University so that's how we're gonna judge it this year I've got to see if that's also something that we need to pay attention for the the pumpkins as well because the pumpkins if you pick them too early and their skins are not good and and strong then um, they won't last but let's see if they have that they do see they have this, it's called a curly, it's called a something or other C. But when that completely dries up, where the stem and the vine meet, then that means your fruit's ready. Alright, now I don't see, yeah I do, it's on there, I think. Oh well, some of them we may have to play by ear. Hear my little groundhog beeper yep they've done really well so i would encourage y'all if you have problems with problems with groundhog in your groundhogs in your garden these little things have been working for us since that first groundhog invasion where they ate so many of our um our sunflowers but you can see we we just do we have tons of these little dudes but anyway as i was telling you we're going to build the A-frames out of wood and down both sides of the A-frames. We're going to use probably field wire, the woven uh, field fence, and just stretch it out all the way across. Here's some of the big flat white pumpkins. Hey dudes! And uh, <clears throat> let the vines grow up. And one person that I had listened to that uses a trellis for their their pumpkins even large pumpkins said that you know people are concerned about of course you know the them breaking free breaking loose from the vines and falling off she said actually no that as they um chelsea killed that one with the weed eater so it's just it's just done but <laughs> you, like i said you can't see you can't take care of them when they're just down in the weeds like this but she said that um, as the fruit develops that the vines get heavier or thicker and thicker and stronger and stronger to actually support the whatever's growing you know pumpkin watermelon whatever so apparently you do not have to worry 
about something just breaking breaking free but we still may you know put the little slings under under the really heavy ones we'll just go to the fabric store and buy a big bolt of some kind of inexpensive netting and just make them a little saddle a little sling to lay in a little hammock that's what we'll call it we'll make them a hammock but uh, I, I'm pretty pleased with how well they're they're producing but I will be really well pleased next year to <laughs> walk through a little tunnel and see them just kind of hanging there yeah this has been pretty impressive. All of his equipment lined up. And the old barn, beautiful old barn. I love that big old oak tree. I'll have to show it to you this fall when it's in its glory. Beautiful red, red, deep, deep, deep maroon leaves. And then the two um, beehives that the bears got, or the bear. But anyway, I'm going to go back to the house and get my buckets ready to cut these sunnies. And I want to start cleaning on that porch, y'all. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully tomorrow's video will be of the porch looking all nice and pretty and ready for a flowers with friends next weekend all right the weather's supposed to start cooling down this week we're supposed to be down in the 70s oh my goodness i can't even wait and i think we're supposed to get a fairly good bit of rain today and especially tomorrow that will be lovely because next week we'll be setting out i think we have about 5,000 seedlings ready to go into the beds that are prepared on the other side of the road and those will be our little seedlings that will overwinter and that's what's going on here i've been hoping to make a longer video once you know on a weekend day um, and this weekend i managed so yay i um appreciate all of you that are keeping up with us and as we as we move along i'll keep y'all informed on the little five minute daily blips but for those of you that are more interested i will bring you on board with a, a longer weekend edition <laughs> that's, that's what i can call it sounds very newsy doesn't it the weekend edition all right I love you so much, and I hope that uh, you're just enjoying the first few days in September, and that September will be just absolutely the most beautiful month that we've had all summer. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.